In this video, we're going to talk about some basic heat calculations that are going to be used very frequently in this chapter. Uh, these calculations, however, are different than the thermodynamic ones we've done thus far involving enthalpy. Uh, these are more of a physics topic involving heat simply being absorbed or released by certain substances in a non-chemical way. We'll start with a list of the learning objectives covered in the video. Uh, we'll do a quick review of how heat moves and the idea of systems, systems and surroundings. Uh, we'll then probably talk about what's the most important part of this section, which is contrasting the differences between heat and temperature, uh, things that very often people confuse as being the same, but in actuality they're different. Last but not least, we'll talk about the calculations that go along with this. We'll create the basis for an equation and then eventually summarize it into a formula that can be used to calculate the amount of heat absorbed or released by any system. So really quickly, uh, let's do a quick reminder of how the system works here. Uh, we talk about these reactions we have or the changes we have as occurring between a system and the surroundings. For example, if we say that the system has an endothermic change, that means it is absorbing heat energy into the system. That heat energy has to come from somewhere due to conservation of matter or conservation of energy, and that heat energy is going to come from the surroundings. And as a result, our system or surroundings feel cooler. And that's typically where we're making our measurements or we're feeling things. Likewise, exothermic, you have a negative value for delta H. That means the heat energy is coming out of the system into the surroundings, and that makes our surroundings feel warmer. And this idea of identifying the system versus the surroundings and how energy is moving between the two of those I think is key to understanding the concepts that we're going to be dealing with in the next phase of the chapter. So let's get into the heart of the matter then, the idea of talking about heat versus temperature. Heat is a measurement of the total kinetic energy in, an, in a system. It's the sum of all the different types of energies and all the different types of movements, including rotational movement, vibrational movement, and translational movement. And this movement over here is being depicted over on the right by the video that we're seeing. Currently we're seeing the vibrational energy as the bonds vibrate. The energy we're seeing now is more of the translational or movement energy and the rotational energy as we see the molecules move around and bump into one another. If you had the capability of adding all that up, that would tell us how much total heat is available in the system. Conversely, temperature is simply a measurement, and this is a new definition, by the way. We've already talked about heat in this chapter. It's a measurement of the average kinetic energy of individual molecules. Uh, basically, the way we measure temperature is by having some sort of bulb on the bottom with a measuring bar on the top. There's a liquid down here, and when the molecules in your sample vibrate and bounce into this, they transfer their kinetic energy into the thermometer, causing the liquid in the thermometer to rise. Uh, the way you measure temperature is more of a product of how we built thermometers back in the day and less of a direct measurement of what's actually going on in the system. That'd be more with heat. As a result, we need to find a way to make sure that we keep these ideas separate and a way to connect the two ideas together because they are obviously linked to one another. So let's talk about some of those contrasts and some of those connections here. Heat and temperature are obviously related to one another. Adding to heat to a system can increase the temperature of that system. A lot of we'll learn later in the chapter, that's not always the case. Removing the heat from the energy system can, can reduce temperature, just like we can uh, increase temperature by adding. And changing temperature always requires there to be the addition or removal of some sort of quantity of heat energy. So again, these are obviously ways that changing heat and changing temperature happen at the same time. But because we take the time to highlight that, that must also mean the fact that heat and temperature are not necessarily always the same thing. And this is the key word, they are not the same thing. Heat, again, is total kinetic energy, and temperature is average kinetic energy. And as we've already identified up here with these cans and always, sometimes there's going to be instances where changes in one do not necessarily reflect a change in the other. At the end of the day, the thing you have to remember for yourself, and this is the most important step or comment probably in the whole chapter here, is the fact that enthalpy and heat and temperature are not the same thing. They are related, but fundamentally different from one another. Before we dive into the, uh, the rest of the discussion here, which is the way we link these two together, uh, I want to remind you of some equations you're going to be responsible for. Uh, these equations involve uh, temperature conversions, basically. Uh, we're going to be focusing primarily on the unit Celsius, the unit Fahrenheit, and the unit Kelvin. Uh, the ones we typically deal with in the science classroom are Kelvin and Celsius, so this is by far the equation you use more often. 
These two guys come in every now and then when you're given data in Fahrenheit and you want to convert it into Celsius. Uh, so this equation, I would say, is far more common. We don't tend to use this guy all that often because we don't do a lot of science work in Fahrenheit. You should have these written down somewhere. You'll have them available to you on equation sheets. Just make sure these equations are ready to go. So let's fold all this up together. We identified the fact that heat and temperature are different things. However, we can relate them together. And what I'd like to do now is to come up with an equation that would allow us to calculate the amount of heat that's necessary for particular temperature changes. First, we're going to identify how those things work. Uh, we can say, for example, that the amount of heat needed to raise temperature is dependent, first of all, on the mass of the sample used. Uh, this may not be obvious yet, but if we think about it in this context, if we have a small pot of water, and we have a significantly larger pot of water, you can ask yourself from your experience which one of these will be easier to get to boil on a stove. And many of us have done this enough to know that the less water you have, the faster it's going to get to the boiling point. So the amount of heat needed to cause a particular temperature change is dependent on mass. Smaller mass equals a bigger temperature change, or delta T. Continuing with our ideas here, the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature is also dependent on how much you want the actual temperature to change. The more we want our temperature to go up, so if we want a bigger delta T, for example, we're going to need more heat energy. And we can think about this in terms of some of the changes, again, we're used to here. If we want to get ice at a relatively low temperature to go to water, that's going to require a certain amount of energy to do based on the amount of temperature change that occurs. And likewise, if we want ice to go all the way up to steam, that's going to require a larger amount of heat because we have a bigger delta T in this scenario. Now, I will warn you, there are other things, other energy concerns going on here aside the ones we've identified, but the statements are still true. This is a smaller delta T up here. It's going to require less energy to get ice to turn into water than it's going to take ice to turn into steam. Last but not least, uh, calculating the amount of heat necessary is also dependent on a new variable, something we're not familiar with yet, something known as specific heat. Uh, because this is not something you deal with on a regular basis, there aren't really any good examples I can show you that you would have seen. However, we can talk about this idea in the context of stuff that you've probably already done. So the definition of specific heat, then, is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance up by one degree Celsius. You can take, for example, this metal pan. Uh, metal pans tend to have very low specific heat values, and as a result of that, it takes a very small amount of energy to get one gram of our metal pan to go up by one degree Celsius. Fill that pan up with water, however, and you'll find that the specific heat of water is specific significantly higher. This has a very high specific heat, and as a result, that same exact pan filled with water might take 20 minutes to raise up to the same temperature it could have raised up before. We can actually quantify this. Uh, the metal in the pan here, for example, takes 0.49 joules of energy for every gram to go up one degree Celsius, whereas the water takes 4.184. It takes 10 times the energy to get the water to go up one degree Celsius than it goes to the metal. And again, if you've ever left an empty pan on a stove, it gets hot super fast. That same pan filled with water might take 10 or 20 minutes to heat up to those same temperatures. This is a reflection of the differences in the specific heat between the metal and the water that we put inside. Some last minute information then about our concept of specific heat. Uh, first of all, it's a fixed value for each chemical, meaning once you know the specific heat of water, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius, you know that value forever. Uh, this value can be given to you by me, it can be looked up in textbooks, and it can even be calculated using some of the methodologies we'll talk about later in this chapter. And really what it is, is a measure of how hard it is to raise the temperature of something. The larger that value of specific, of, of, um, specific heat is, the harder it is to raise the temperature. And before we plow ahead with this, my last thing I'll talk about here, this is the symbol we typically use for specific heat, the letter C. And again, the units are always in joules per gram degrees Celsius. However, any, temp any energy unit divided by mass unit divided by temperature unit is also a specific heat as well. Now that we've identified the key factors that affect uh, the relationship between temperature and, and energy, we can formulate them into an equation, and that equation looks just like this one here. Uh, the lowercase value of u is the uh, value we use to represent our heat energy. m is going to be our mass, 
typically in the units of grams. C is going to be our specific heat. That unit is joules per gram degree Celsius. And then delta T is our change in temperature. And the relationships we discussed earlier all work in this equation. If M gets larger, a bigger mass sample, it takes more heat to get the temperature to change to occur. If C gets larger, it takes more energy for one degree temperature change. And if delta T gets larger, we talked about bigger temperature changes, again, require more heat energy. So again, all of the relationships that we identified earlier match up in the format of the equation here. In later sections of this chapter, we're going to be using this equation as a tool to relate primarily together the change in temperature in a sample and the amount of heat required to do that as a link between the temperature which we can measure and Q which eventually gets us to a value of delta H. So that's pretty much it for our video here. At this stage in the game you should be able to do a couple of things. Uh, for example, you should be able to explain what the difference is between heat and temperature is, total versus average kinetic energy. You should be able to convert between the different temperature units, uh, especially if you have the equations there in front of you. Uh, you should be able to describe and explain what specific heat is and be able to compare the characteristics of substances with different specific heats. And then last but not least, uh, and we'll practice this more later on, uh, you should be able to use the equation Q equals MC delta T as a tool to connect the value of heat together to the value of temperature. And as always, we'll talk more about this in class and provide some examples.